Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk a little bit about CSS modules and them. So let's get into it. What we're going to cover is basically some of the benefits of CSS modules, or at least the main benefit from a lot of people's perspective, and the benefits of BEM, and then we will talk a little bit about a few considerations to remember. So first and foremost, the thing that needs to be said here is that CSS modules is a <clears throat> very, very popular way of well, basically including CSS in... well basically in your JavaScript. And although that is the intention, there is a few practices that a lot, of, a lot of people are using. And I've seen a few projects and been part of a few large projects where I see a pattern that is emerging that is coming with this convenience that you, you have through CSS modules. So that's the first thing I want you to take a bit of a look at. So I've created this little Webpack configuration here, which is just going to pull in and create a bundle, which is called bundle modules. And here you can see that I, for my CSS imports, I'm simply going to use the style loader, CSS loader, and I'm going to enable my my modules. And here is my naming strategy for the produced selectors. So basically, I'm going to use the file name of the like the spacing of the file name that I'm actually importing and the actual selector that I have in my file and then I'm going to add this little base64 hash here to to the end and finally we spit out this little HTML, HTML file. Now this is a fairly basic and very standard setup for using CSS modules and the benefit that a lot of people think that they cannot get from this is that they have the hash here at the end which allows them to very quickly use I mean I will even go on further and I will say that this is probably the norm that people simply use the local selector name or the class name that they have in the style sheet that they are importing and then append a hash of some sort at the end. It's very convenient, it makes it very easy for you to produce, you know, you don't have to think so much about naming because it doesn't matter if you have things that are named the same thing because the hash is going to take care of the specificity for you and you won't have colliding selectors. So here's my little server. In this example, I'm actually running two parallel processes, one for serving up the BEM content and one for the modules, just running them on, on different ports. And here is my modules app here. And here is my BEM app. They are basically identical, though it's just different files, right? And here are my views. So let's focus on the modules first and foremost. So basically, this is a, just a web page that is going to be used as a template, as we saw earlier. And it's going to be outputted into this dist folder and then it's going to serve up its content, which is going to include a few things. But let's look at the application first and foremost. So this is my very fancy little application that is built with CSS modules. Now, the first thing that we should have a bit of a look at here is like these headers here. And if we can see, if we have a look here in our markup you can see here that this is CSS modules in in action right I am well actually let's look at the JavaScript first so here is my modules file which is the entry point all it's gonna do is it's gonna bring in these three header modules and some global styles you can look at those as well just some very simple styling there and then it's going to bring in all these headers and they're going to be appended to the body and that's what you're seeing right now so the naming convention goes like this. Okay, so styles is the first namespace, which is going to be the file name, and then you have the selector name of the actual thing, the, the rule that is actually being included, and then you have the little hash here at the end. So if we look at header number one, which is the first thing that we're doing here, you can see here that I am pulling in the styles, I am creating my element, setting some text, setting the class name, and exporting the element, and then I'm basically appending it. And in my styles, you can see that I have this thing here. Now my comment on this pattern, which is very, very, very common. This way of working is extremely common. So what's the issue with this? Well, fundamentally there is there isn't much of an issue depending on how you uh, how you look at it, but something that is in my world a little bit of a problem is that because you're not respecting your styles enough to actually give it a semantic name, you are creating a ambiguous selector. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, the problem comes when you have this name here, 
header. Now, in a small code base like this, this is not a problem. But when you have thousands of components where every single person on the project has this pattern of just giving something a very ambiguous name and trusting that the hash that is being produced here at the end is going to save them, that creates another sort of problem. And the problem that it creates is if I do this, well, as you can see now, I actually have three different header references just from searching. And imagine if I had a really big project, thousands of components, and everybody calls this thing header. And another favorite of mine is container. Everything, every, I, I don't know how many times I've been trying to figure out which selector is actually being used here, and everything's called a container. Because remember, this hash only exists after everything is compiled. So when you're searching through your code, the only way for you to really know which selector we're talking about here is if somebody has been for, had the foresight to actually really name the file in question that is actually being imported something semantically correct that is at attached to this specific component or if you're lucky you can create a search query a string search or something like that and use the properties of uh, of the selector in order to figure out which style you like where this thing is actually included because remember this style it's just by practice that I'm using this as a component type of system it could have been a much more global thing and been reused in many many places so it becomes very tricky for you to figure out which uh, like what, what the scope of this selector actually is so then that of course brings the argument okay so how can we solve this with css modules well we can do something like this if we look at example number two here we can be a little bit better at our names we can say that okay we'll just okay we'll accept the fact that we maybe being too ambiguous like this might be a problem because remember if you have an ambiguous name the hash isn't good the hash only helps you once you have built your assets but for project maintenance it becomes a bit of a hassle to figure out what the scope of things is especially when you have a lot of them so here's another one okay so header and another header right we're grabbing header 2 this time so we've taken the precaution of actually naming our our file this time so we get at least that namespace because now internally here we can still call this header and everything's hunky dory right and then we do the same thing now here is why I where I will argue that a bit of the hash benefit actually goes away because remember the two main conveniences people see and argue for with css modules and having this hash system is that all right they don't have to really consider the global namespace anymore and that is true they don't really have to consider it from a runtime perspective in other words when the code is running but they still have to consider it to some point now because of maintain maintenance problems in other words if you have thousands of components that are using the name container or header or something ambiguous like that and that is multiplied in many 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 places it becomes very tricky for you to figure out what's actually you know what you're looking for and that ambiguity is uh, you know, now even even after we have realized that maybe this is a problem, we try to solve it basically by creating a unique a unique selector. It's a component level unique a component level selector that is we're creating here that is going to be unique. So it's basically a namespace. I'm saying that okay, so this component because the first one is called the header, the other one is header two. It could you know of course be something else, but this is my namespace. And inside of that, I can continue being ambiguous, and that's fine, because I have this namespace. And finally, we can see that if we have a little bit of a, like a slightly more advanced example, a, like this thing you're seeing here, this is pretty much how things are going to start moving. You're going to see people adopt this. This is this. It might vary at your company, but this is what I see pretty much anybody. Uh, most uh, using CS modules do like what this is what they do. They simply become quote unquote lazy with their naming and creates a like a cascade. I mean, how many how many references do you think you're going to have to header or subheader? Or as I said, my favorite one is container. That is probably one of the most common, especially with flexbox and all that good stuff. People are using container left and right for an, for a naming strategy. And what you're left with is this. 
styles contain or like this is I mean uh, uh, as I stated earlier people don't usually even use the file this uh, the name they just have the local name or the local which means that this component would in in of itself just this single component would have container header and subheader and all I can say is that when you have thousands of components those names are pretty pretty common and when you're searching for things and trying to figure out what selectors you can add or remove and so forth hopefully you have some type of architecture strategy so that you can actually keep all that straight in your head now what I want to touch on is this thing however so if we wanted to actually try to solve this sort of problem we would need to think about namespacing and that's the th this is the thing that I think you should be doing if you're using CSS, mod CSS modules in this fashion I really think that you should start thinking about the namespacing pattern here because it becomes l a lot easier if you can search for a namespace when you're look trying to figure out what components and you have on your in your application and what sub styles they have it creates this very nice box if you will of uh, or this sphere of where things are happening so it's not possible for things to be all over the place and that becomes very searchable and that's the thing you're going for trying to figure out the scope of things it comes down to having something to be searchable so let's look at the other example here I have a different application here which is using the BEM name style now let's walk through this instead let's close up all of this again and here is my BEM file so we're still using CSS modules but in this case we're just using local there's no hash nothing like that and Let's close this down here because I don't want that to mess up my things. So let's, uh, well, we already looked at the BEM app now, didn't we? So here is something like right off the bat. So BEM emphasizes a different way of working. Now, because BEM doesn't really require you to have any type of like CSS modules, let's remember that CSS modules only works as part of a build of some sort you can't just arbitrarily use it however you want so the practices that you gain or the benefits you gain from CSS modules is very tightly coupled to basically having your JavaScript as part of your webpack build or your JavaScript in some fashion but BEM can be added you know wherever you want so here I've added footer 2 just into the header because I hey I just want this to be something that is I mean if you're doing th I mean you can do this in a, like a critical paths and above fold CSS inlining and all that good stuff with CSS modules as well but I just want to illustrate that this is something that some people forget sometimes that this is actually fairly flexible I mean just using them will but in of itself will actually give you a lot more flexibility at the cost of, as I said, at the cost of being having to actually follow a practice. But that's the thing that I want to kind of see if I can relate to you here, that there's actually that practice that some people think that they need to follow and that they're losing a little bit of the convenience of CSS modules isn't really true if you really think about it. Because as I said, remember, unless you are willing <clears throat> to have all these ambiguous names that makes it that create make create like you may save a few seconds of not having to think about the component name when you're using the style but if you and, and the cost is that when you have a really massive super product with hundreds and hundreds and thousands of components you're going to have to sit, waste time trying to figure out what's going on as a trade for those few seconds and if you if you don't want to make that trade, you're still going to have to think about the component name. You're, like this is the same thing. Header two is the same thing as footer two as in in the world of BEM. It's the exact same thing. So here we are importing some footers instead, and let's look at footer one just to kind of illustrate this here. So this is footer one, and it is pretty much the exact same like the only difference here is that I'm calling this footer one and that's the block that's my namespace right there footer one I don't have to as uh, as I stated earlier I'm losing the, the benefit of being able to just say header and forcing myself and my coworkers to say something more semantic now in this case I mean I wouldn't call something further one in a real application but I'm forced to call this component something semantic which means that if I want to find footer one there's going to be a single inst reference 
and that's going to be that reference. I don't have to question, I, I, I will always, there's a one-to-one -one mapping to all the places between my search and all the places where this specific selector is referenced. And there's a lot of power in that when you have really large projects. Let's look at footer 2. As we saw earlier, footer 2, okay, I, in this case I don't even need CSS modules. I've decided to add that into my, my document which I can do. And the namespacing strategy, okay, the, the downsides of having ambiguous names as you may face in a lot of larger CSS code bases is also like it's taken care of because I'm following the BAM, BAM naming practice. And finally we have footer 3 here and as you can see here this is a slightly more complex component so where is all of that coming from? Well it's coming from this file here. I have an external document, it's not even part of my uh, on, on of the regular flow. I just have it for some reason and because I am, as I stated, using this practice of alright, I create my namespace and once I have my namespace, I mean I don't have to, I mean guys, I don't think at all that much. I don't think that we, I think we can agree that, alright, so if I think out the names that my component is going to be named for the three and then all of my subcomponents can see, are basically saved uh, underneath this namespace, this is as flexible as this. It is the exact same thing, minus the hash there. So the specificity comes into uh, the only thing that needs to be, you need to give some thought process to, is the actual block name. Once you have the block name, everything underneath is for the most part fairly straightforward and requires almost no cognitive resources. You can, if you can be more semantic if you want to, but you don't really have to all that much. And the beautiful part is that you will always have an easy time figuring out the scope of, you know, of your selectors. You will find them immediately instead of doing this and having the issue where you don't really know which styles are actually included on what page and so forth. So what I want you to take, like, consider with this is that I'm not saying that you shouldn't use CSS modules. What I'm trying to push you towards doing is to not do this very ambiguous naming where you have these, just because you have the hash, remember, that only helps you when the code is out running. But remember that in a really large project, searchability and having the having a maintainable code base is also important. Have a great day.